Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining me today because we're gonna be checking out a very cool new channel strip from Rupert Neve Designs. Let's get started. Today we're checking out the Newton channel, the latest channel strip from Rupert Neve Designs. Now this is a modern channel strip design, but it still takes its sonics from that vintage classic Rupert Neve legacy. And so it has all that Rupert Neve tone, but it also has some modern features and capabilities as well. Now you might wonder where the name came from. Newton is actually the birthplace of Rupert Neve, Newton Abbott in England. And so that's where the name for the channel strip came from. But what we have here is we have a mic line preamp section, we have a three band EQ section, a compressor. We have the R&D silk control. And then we also have dual outputs on the back, dual transformer coupled outputs. And we'll be talking a little bit more about why there are two outputs in just a second. Now, like all of Rupert Neve Designs products, we have incredible specs here. The 3 dB down point, as far as frequency response goes, is less than five hertz and as high as 140 kilohertz. If we go plus or minus 0.25 dB, we're from below five hertz to 70 kilohertz. And if we look at just plus minus 0.1 dB, we're from less than five hertz to 30 kilohertz. So we have extremely broad frequency response. And those are the sort of specs that you can expect from a Rupert Neve Design product. And it certainly impacts the sound quality with this channel strip. As we'll hear later, it's a fantastic sounding piece of gear. So what do we have here? We have a class A discrete preamp for mic and line level signals. There's an XLR jack on the back and there's a TRS jack as well for line level signals. We've got 66 dB of gain on the main gain control. And that's in six dB increments. And then we have a trim control that gives us plus or minus six dB. The total of those two controls gives us a maximum of 72 dB on board. Of course, we have phantom power and we also have a high pass filter. Now, the nice thing about that high pass filter is that we can actually bypass it. On many channel strips and preamps, you can't actually bypass the high pass filter. You have to actually move the knob. So in this case, we can engage that and circle that up to whatever frequency we want up to 250 Hertz. In the middle, we have the three band EQ. Now this is a low frequency shelving, high frequency shelving, and then a sweepable mid range. The low frequency shelf can be switched from 60 Hertz to 150 Hertz. And the high frequency shelf can switch from eight kilohertz to 16 kilohertz. For the mid range, we have control over both frequency and of course boost and cut as well. Each of the three EQ bands allows you to boost or cut up to 12 dB. One final thing to note, we can also bypass the EQ, so it's very easy to AB your signals as you're processing them. Moving on to the compressor, we also have an independent bypass switch for this section. And this is a VCA-based compressor. It's a very smooth sounding compressor. The way that it works is, as you pass the threshold, you have a soft knee approach, and the ratio increases as you compress more and more. So we've got a threshold control, we've got a release control, and then we have a makeup gain control, which has plenty of gain. It can give you as much as 20 dB of makeup gain. This switch allows you to place the compressor either before or after the EQ and the signal path. An important feature of many of Rupert Neve Designs products is this silk switch. This is a three position switch. It goes from off to red to blue, and then of course back to off. So it cycles through those three settings. What the silk process does is add harmonic content into your signal. And the amount that you add is controlled by the texture knob. When we're in red, we're adding harmonics in the upper mids and the high frequencies. In blue, we're adding harmonics in the low frequencies and the low mids. So you can really tailor this to the response that you want. And it allows you to get into that vintage Neve preamp territory. Rounding things out on the front panel, we have a gain reduction meter as well as an output level meter. Checking out the back panel, we begin with an XLR input for microphones, then a balanced quarter inch input for line level signals. We have dual transformer coupled outputs. And the reason there are two outputs is the second one is actually six dB lower in level than the first. And this can provide either a safety as you're recording, or it can let you drive that transformer harder without overloading anything that may be further down the signal chain. The final connection on the back panel is the link jack. If you're using two Newton channels in stereo, you can link the compressors together so that they operate in unison. So let's listen to what the Newton channel can do for us. I'm going to bring in a Neumann U87AI. We'll check it out a little bit here on my voice. And then we'll be recording in stereo using a pair of Sony C80 microphones on an acoustic guitar using both these Newton channels. So I've got my U87 coming into the microphone input on the Newton channel. Got my gain set to about 30 dB, which is working out perfectly for the level we're at here. Now we can engage that high pass filter and sweep that up. And you'll hear that it's reducing the low frequencies in the signal. So if you're having problems with rumble, even plosives and those kinds of things, or too much low frequency content, you can dial in that high pass filter exactly where you want it to be. Having the bypass switch allows you to easily AB compare the sound as you're using that high pass filter. 
Likewise, we can independently bypass the three band EQ. The low frequency is shelving. So as we turn that up, everything below the cutoff frequency is boosted. As we turn it down, everything below is cut, of course. We can switch from 60 hertz to 150 hertz. Check, check, check. This is what it sounds like at 150 hertz. You can hear it's getting into the lower mid range of my voice. Switch back to 60, it drops down into the lower frequencies of my voice. We can roll that back. Same thing on the high frequencies. We can bring out the very high frequencies at 8 kilohertz or shift up to 16 kilohertz to add more air on the top end. We can roll that back if we're getting high frequency noise or if we want to reduce the brightness. Bring that back in at 8 kilohertz. The mid range control is extremely wide ranging. So we can set that everywhere from very low 220 hertz boost that up or we can sweep that all the way up to 7 kilohertz and work on the very high mid frequencies and roll it back into the middle. We've got 12 dB of boost and cut on each of those bands. Once again having that independent bypass for the section allows us to easily A B compare. Next let's engage the compressor. We'll dial that up so the threshold we can see our amount of gain reduction here on the meter. The release time goes from slow to fast so we can set that sweep that through for my voice what we're doing here a medium setting seems to be fine we've got plenty of makeup gain so when we bypass we can a b compare now, as you can hear that's a very transparent sounding compressor but it does really thicken things up and it allows you to control the dynamics of course as well so switching that in and out check one two check one two you can hear how it stabilizes my voice we'll drop the makeup gain just a little bit and raise the threshold a little bit more Check one, two, testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four. That's a great sounding compressor. Next, let's check out the silk control. When it's bypassed, of course, the signal goes straight through. When we engage that one time, it goes to the red setting, which adds high mids and high frequencies. And we can dial in the amount using the texture control. You can hear that it's bringing out the detail in the upper mids just a little bit. It can be a subtle effect or it can be a more dramatic effect, depending on the input signal that you're working with. Now we can roll that back down. You can hear it gets darker. So it's very effective actually in shaping the sound. Now let's switch to the blue setting. We'll be adding harmonics in the low mids and the low frequencies. So let's turn that up and you can hear that it fills out the bottom end, makes it a little bit rounder, a little bit more solid, adds more punch. Roll that back and things go back to, I guess what you'd say is their natural state and we'll bypass. So it's a fantastic sounding channel strip, certainly for voiceover or spoken word. It's incredible for sung vocals as well, all kinds of instruments. Any source is going to sound great to the Newton channel. But since I'm lucky enough to have two of them here, let's go ahead and set up two Sony C80 microphones. We'll put them in front of an acoustic guitar and check out what we can do with the Newton channel. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Rupert Neve Designs Newton channel. It's a fantastic sounding preamp that gives you so much versatility. The preamp itself sounds fantastic, of course, and has a lot of versatility. That silk control really allows you to shape the sound of that preamp. We've got the three band EQ, we've got the VCA compressor, dual outputs, linking for two units in stereo. Lots of features, lots of versatility, but ultimately just a great sounding channel strip for your studio. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. If you'd like to learn more about the Newton channel, visit Sweetwater.com or contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. They can give you all the information on this or any of Rupert Neve Designs products. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.